So right now I'm outside the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences here in Stockholm, Sweden. This is actually the same building where the Nobel Prizes are announced every year. And inside here now, our friends at Molecular Frontiers have gathered some top scientists that are talking about their explorations of really extreme environments. When we hear about extreme environments and what lives there, we sometimes forget that someone at some point decided that this place is where I want to go and explore, no matter how inhospitable it may be. And it has always fascinated me to hear their stories. First, meet... Captain Alfred Scott McLaren, U.S. Navy retired, Ph.D. from uh, Nederland, Colorado, USA. Well, most of my life's been on the sea, and um, I'd say most of my life I've spent underwater at least five and a half years now underwater at last count. Captain McLaren is truly a legend as a submarine explorer. Aboard a USS Queenfish, he led the first survey under the Arctic ice of the entire Siberian continental shelf at depths greater than 5,000 meters. I really worked to get this trip. This was the real plum, going to one of the most dangerous areas in the world to explore where there were no bottom soundings at all. People ask, were we afraid? No. Main thing was to uh, really blend in, know that environment, and operate as safely as possible, but just push the limits. By pushing the limits like Captain McLaren and his crew did, we have learned a lot about Earth's most extreme environments and the organisms that thrive there. These so-called extremophiles can then in turn help us understand a lot about how life started on the planet and lift off, and also how we could continue our search for life in space. Hi, my name is Leroy Chow, and I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm a former NASA astronaut and space station commander. Space is a very unforgiving environment. I mean, the temperature extremes are typically somewhere between uh, 250 degrees Fahrenheit below zero to 250 degrees uh, above zero. And so that's one thing. The other thing, of course, space is a very harsh environment in that it's a vacuum. So a living organism, including humans, can't survive in a vacuum without a spacecraft or a space suit. And then, of course, the radiation environment, especially as we fly beyond the magnetosphere of the Earth, uh, is going to be very harsh as well, and probably the biggest biomedical challenge. But it's possible that life exists elsewhere in the universe. In fact, I'm pretty much sure of it. Uh, it's just a matter of going out and finding it. The first step to this is currently being done at our closest neighboring planet, Mars. So Curiosity has both scooped up its first dirt sample and also drilled into our first rocks. And one of the cool things that we're finding is a lot of water in the, both the soil and the rocks. I'm Lori Leshen. I'm the Dean of the School of Science at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. So we always get more questions than answers with exploration, which is one of the reasons I love it. It just opens the mind in whole new ways. Probably the next steps we're going to need to take are to actually bring some rocks back to labs here on Earth where we've got great capabilities to really tear them apart in detail. And eventually sending humans to Mars. They are the best explorers. So I really hope I'll be around to see it when we, when we send those first scientists to Mars. I do think it will happen. Well, I hope you found that as inspirational as I did. And that's all we have for you today. Remember, Unteamed Science is a collaborative effort and we're always looking for new people to collaborate with. So if you do have a research project that you think we could do something on, please don't hesitate to contact us.